Hello, welcome to my visual analysis project on chapter two. So pretty much the textbook thesis for this chapter is about how when Europeans came to America, they gained a lot of freedom, but they also took away the freedom of the Native Americans that were already living there. So this is a drawing that I did a few years ago for another class that I took about manifest destiny. And I feel like it really represents the thesis of this chapter pretty well as well. So pretty much the Europeans represented right here by the American flag were kind of bulldozing the Native American culture, which is symbolized by the teepee and the trees. And they were replacing it with their own culture and ideas represented by the railroad and telephone poles in the background, which wasn't really present at this time. I don't think it was present at all, but I do feel like it really helps represent the thesis. So again, pretty much incoming Europeans were stealing natives culture and giving them less freedom at the expense that they got their own more freedom. So for the course reader thesis, it was on how African ladies' sexuality was used to justify the, the slavery of their race. So pretty much there's this meme about monogamy. So pretty much Africans, they were, they were polyamorous which the Europeans saw as not good at all. That was against their Bible and against all of their teaches, teachings. So I mean, this meme kind of, this is the monogamous people being kind of like offended and the Africans being like, ah, oh, yes, polyamorous, much better. So again, pretty much the Europeans, the African women were different from them because the European women, they were abstinent until marriage and then they pretty much only, their only purpose is kind of for children. But the African women got a lot of pleasure out of sexual intercourse and they would also have it with multiple different people without marriage. And since this is different from the European standards in culture, they saw them as lesser, which justified slavery. There wasn't a case study piece or like a case study that I could find for this week. I, I looked around for it a lot I might be mistaken, but I just couldn't find one. So moving on for different opinions slash point of views. So Matthew Rosen said that we as students of history should acknowledge that dehumanization is still being used today, especially in the realm of politics. It is one manner in which people cannot control other people. So it is crucial that we look at institutions that practice this. I misread. It is one manner that in which people can control their people, not can't. So it is crucial that we look at institutions that practice this and prevent slash stop it from becoming a part of our nation's invisible systems. I agree with this. It didn't change my perspective at all when I was reading it. Like, not my perspective, my opinion. It did change my perspective a little bit because I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it before. But I do think it makes a lot of sense. Um, Matthew brought up some points that I agree with, so I think it, liter it, it only um, increased my like agreement with this topic. So for my second opinion, this one is an opinion. So I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Norma Kezala says, before entering the new world, African-American women were distinguished by their skin color, hair texture, and facial features that were different from the Europeans. The concept of race established in the late 18th and early 19th century. I didn't really think about this, like the concept of race being created during this time because it seems like something that probably existed a little bit beforehand, but it, it does make sense that as Europeans were being exposed to other cultures and peoples with different skin tones as their own and like different features that look different, that they would become more like, they would create something that would make the Europeans seem better when compared to the other people. So this kind of changed my opinion and answer because I hadn't considered this before and I was responding to the discussion. But I do agree with her, though, that the concept of race was founded during this time. My opinion also didn't change after watching this week's lecture, because although it was kind of brutal to listen to, mm -hmm. it again confirmed my earlier thoughts about this whole subject. Okay. For the focus question, it was, I chose one, describe in detail at least two significant differences between Native Americans and Europeans. What factors do you think are the greatest source of conflict between the two groups? So number one is obviously religion, because... Even later in history, they were building like monasteries and not churches, missions, and they enslaved Native Americans to 
convert them. Pretty much the Native Americans, they didn't really want to convert to Christianity because they had their own religion that was already working for them. So this, this caused a very direct conflict between the Europeans who were Christian and the Native Americans who were not. They also had different ideas about how land ownership worked. This was a pretty big source of conflict because the Native Americans believed that the land belonged to everyone, that everyone would be able to use it, and the Europeans believed that a certain person should be entitled to a portion of land, so pretty much how, how things work now. Just, you can buy property and it's yours. This led to a lot of problems because the Native Americans believed that the land was everyone's, and then when the Europeans came in, were like, nope, this is our land now. The Native Americans were kind of just like, well, that's... That's... They couldn't really do anything about it. Like, they, they attacked them, obviously, because that's what that's how they would resolve the conflict. But pretty much that, that caused problems, and the Europeans were like, nope, our land, because this is like they were taking the natives, like, community land. All right. Thank you for watching and listening to my visual analysis project for Chapter 2. I hope that you learned something or at least found this entertaining to watch.